Welcome, we're so glad you're here with us today. I'm Jenny Yazzie. I work for the uh, Family History Department and Family Search. And today um, we have Dennis here with us and he's gonna talk a little bit about memories and I'll let him explain the topic in detail. But Dennis, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to everybody. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Dennis Modugno. Um, I'm a user experience designer at Family Search. And I work on the product called Memories. And uh, today we are going to be talking about memories and how to make uh, your memories more rich and uh, better to share. So I'm going to go on and start sharing my screen um, so that we can, we can kind of have an experience together and see how that Awesome. Goes. I'm excited. OK. Let me see when you see my screen. I see it. OK, perfect. OK, so we are in Family Search. And the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, tell you how to get to um, Memories. And we're going to be talking about Gallery today. OK. If you go on Memories and then you click on Gallery, you're going to be presented with this page. This is your Gallery. And the gallery is basically a shoebox, kind of a place where um, all of your memories gets collected. Okay. And um, you can put all sorts of memories. You can see on top, you have a uh, possibility to add photos. You can add stories that we're going to be talking more about. We can add documents. You can add audio files. And so this is kind of the area where you upload them all, and then you can attach them. Uh, to the people in your tree. And there are going to be people talking, other presentations are going to be talking about that. We're gonna, not going to go into that, but I'm going to tell you about memories and how to add the memory, as well as um, how to make it rich and, and very useful to other people. Okay, great. Okay, so the first thing you do is you click on um, the add button, uh, the green button that says add memories, you click on it. And you have different options. Uh, one of the things that you can do is to drag and drop pictures or uh, files. And I'm going to show you that in a bit. And then this is the kind of file that we support. And one thing to know is that we support files that are up to 15 megabytes. Now, oh. 15 megabytes seems small, but actually it's pretty big. An image that is 15 megabytes is pretty big. So don't worry about it. Um, but it's going to be. Uh, most most of the time you're not gonna have problems, but okay. don't know about that. And you also have an option to use a, a, a file names and titles. We're gonna be talking about titles today. So if you have if you are very very organized and you catalog catalog your titles and your images uh, in a certain way, that could help you out. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be choosing some files from my computer. So I'm gonna click on choose files. And I'm in a folder inside my gallery called Genealogy. And I have some picture of my, uh, my grandparents. So okay. I'm gonna pick a picture of my grandpa and another picture of my grandpa and my grandma and another picture of my grandma. Um, they are all gone, they are all deceased, but that's one of the reasons why I'm uploading them in Family Search. Okay. I'm uploading them and when I click open, you see they're gonna start uploading and then a bit at a time, uh, you're gonna be showing them here. Okay. okay. So uh, that's one way to add photos, for example. You can also add PDFs and you can also add audio files. I'm not gonna be showing you that right now, but that's something you can do. And then one thing I'm gonna try right now, I'm gonna show you how to drag and drop. Okay. So if I am um, here, and sorry, and I have, um, I go in my pictures on the genealogy and I have this picture of my other grandpa. I'm just gonna drag it and drop it in. And that picture is gonna be uploaded too. Super easy. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That's how we do that. Now let's look at what happens when you open an image, right? I just uploaded this image of my grandpa and so what I do is that I click on it, and as I click on it, this view um, is going to show up. Um, 
And in this view, you're basically gonna be able to see the image bigger. You're gonna be able to zoom in and you're gonna be able to zoom out. Um, and you can add information uh, to this uh, picture that you just uploaded. Um, one of the reasons why we, we do that and one of the reasons why we have this whole um, thing going on is because we want to make sure that people um, when they look at this picture, they know exactly what's going on and they know a bit the story of this picture. Okay. A, story, a picture by itself is not really, it doesn't really tell much. I mean, I know that this is a man and no, he has glasses, probably was at a wedding. I can tell some of the things, but adding information about this uh, specific person can help someone else down the line. Um, for example, my kids or my grandkids to learn more about their grand, great grandfather or their grandfather and know some of the things that happen in his life, right? Okay. So right now I can add a title, for example, and that's the first thing you can do. And when you add a title, you want to put as much information as you can in there. And for example, I can put, this is, his name was Carmelo Panebianco. That's um, my, my grandpa's name. Um, and wedding picture. This is a picture he took at a wedding that he was at. Okay. So I can save it. And that's uh, one of the things. And then I can add information about it. I can add an event date. Um, I think that this was around 2012, I think. That's when it was. No, 2009. And I don't have a specific date, but I can just put 2009. I don't remember exactly the date, but I know there was in Philadelphia. And so Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and that's the information. Now, this, this picture is much more. We know that my grandpa lived in Philadelphia. We know that in 2009 was at a wedding and I know that it was a wedding picture. Now, there is also a description. A description, uh, you can put more information about it. So you can say this is a picture of my grandpa at his granddaughter's wedding. Okay. Or actually, great granddaughter. And so now. I can spell. And now, um, now we have more information about, about Carmelo. We know that he was in Philadelphia. He was at a, 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 a wedding. This is a picture he took at the wedding. And actually was at one of his great granddaughters. And I can put more information in that. I can put who the granddaughter is. And I can tell the story of this, this picture and this event in a very simple and easy way. Yeah, that looks really simple. I, uh, it gives a whole lot of context in just those little things you just did. Yeah, and one reason we do that is because we really want to create more of a story around this picture. A picture by itself, as we said, is not, it's not much, but with all this information, now you are adding uh, more to it. Now we also have this section called topic tags. And the topic tag um, is, is a bit like an hashtag or, um, a, a, a topic tag information of, of what's going on. And one of the reasons why we have this, the topic tags, is because um, it's easy, it, we can make through topic tags this picture easier to find. So one of the cool things about um, family search is that when we get the pictures um, from, from our users, um, they normally get attached to um, a person in the tree. I'm going to show you. Um, how uh, that will happen. And um, they, people can find them more easily and they can actually uh, be able to, to find information about their ancestors, their relatives. So let's say that me and you were cousins, okay? And we all both had the same grandpa. Now, if I go on family search and upload a picture of my grandpa um, and you are searching 
or your grandpa, you're gonna be able to see this picture and all the information that I wrote in it. Uh, and the topic tag is another way for you to search. So if you're searching for wedding pictures, you can search by topic tag and there's gonna be um, <clears throat> another demo on the find experience in family search. So please go and look that one up. Okay. Uh, but you can basically find this picture uh, through the information that you just entered and through the topic tags. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that very easily. So I can add topic tags, wedding, picture. And as you can see, uh, the topic tag that I add is a global topic tag. So it's it's not just my way of organizing things, but is, is a way of organizing as well as sharing with other people. There are 2.3 thousand uh, wedding picture um, topic tags in our system. And so if I click on wedding picture and I save it, now <clears throat> this is gonna be one of the 2,300 pictures about wedding picture. And if I, if I click on this, on this topic tag, it's gonna be taking me and showing me all of those pictures. So 2014. Oh, wow. And so I'll be able to actually look at all the wedding picture <clears throat> in the system. And the one about my grandpa is gonna be there as well. Nice. Do you have any questions so far? No, that's great. I Can you create tags that haven't been there, aren't listed currently? Yes, absolutely. You absolutely can. And so I can still do a topic tag. And right now, for example, I want to put a, tag, a topic tag by um, by person. I want to create topic tags about my grandpa. And so I can put Carmelo Panebianco. And as you can see, Carmelo Panebianco shows a zero because nobody else created that topic. But I can create my own and save it. Oh, awesome. So every time you have a picture of him, you can tag it. Mm -hmm. And it's just an easy, quick way to pull his, all his pictures yeah. up. That's great. So that's one way of organizing it. But you can also, if you search for a person in the tree and you find my grandpa, you can also look at his pictures um, and, and that, that are attached, that's what we say, to his person on family tree. And the way to do that is pretty easy. You click on his face. And then you get this little grabbable square. You put it on his face and you can put Carmelo Pane Bianco. And when you add Carmelo Pane Bianco, is, is creating the tag Carmelo Pane Bianco. And then you can attach that tag to family tree. And so you can find Carmelo Fanebianco on the tree. So if I do find in family tree, or you can attach it to his person ID. So if you have the person ID, uh, every person in the tree has a specific ID, you can enter that specifically, but you can also find it. And so if I do find in family tree, it's gonna take me to a find form and I can search for Carmelo Fanebianco and his mail. And he was born in Giarre, Italy. And I do find. And this is my grandpa. Oh, wow. And so that's Carmelo Bonibianco. That's my, my grandma. And these are his parents. And if I do select, now this picture that I just uploaded is attached to Carmelo Panebianco. Oh, that nice. And I have in my tree. And I can go and look at his memories. And I can see the picture that I just uploaded right there. Nice. Okay. So um, talking about memory, there is one more thing that I would like to discuss, uh, one more way to enrich this photo. Okay. And, the, and I'm just gonna mention it, um, and there's gonna be a demo about this specifically um, on, um, on Rootstack. Okay. This little part that says record the memory. And so if you look at the enrich your photos by recording only narration, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. But so that you know, the another way to add information about this picture and to tell more of the story of this picture is through recording an audio memory attached to this um, 
to this uh, picture. I yeah. had no idea you could do that. That's amazing. Yeah, that is a new feature that we just added. And then I think it's it's something that really adds. And one of the reasons why we like that is, is because at least if I have a, an audio recording of um if i have my if my grandpa was still here and i could talk to him and add an, an audio of his voice to this picture now 10 years down the line his kids and grandkids can actually re-listen to his voice uh, and is saved forever in our website and and you can actually uh, re-listen to your uh, loved ones um, online and so that's that's kind of traveling through time right yeah. Who doesn't want to travel to time? I do. <laughs> so there is one more thing um, that I, I just remember, uh, and is this little bar at the bottom. So at the bottom, when it says, share what you know about this image. Um, so one thing that you can do as um, from, um, one thing you can do is you can add information about this picture writing a story about it. So let's say I was at the wedding of my cousin, right? Of his okay. granddaughter. And I wanted to tell a story about what happened. This picture kind of uh, sparks a memory in me, right? And so I'm like, oh yeah, I remember the day. I wanna write something about it. And I can write that by saying, by clicking on it and then writing something. I remember that day. Grandpa was so excited. And I can write more and more and more about it. And um, I can then save it. And now other people that come to this picture, I'm gonna be able to see that I commented on the 8th of December, 2020. And they have a story about that picture from somebody who was actually at that event. So my kids now and my grandkids, they're gonna be looking at this are gonna be able to actually read a story about their great grandfather told by their father or their grandfather. And so it's it's literally uniting people through generations. And, and yeah. that's, that's the amazing thing that I, I love about family search. The fact that we can preserve uh, stories and images and, and events, uh, and, and then they can be relived by different people in different times of the year. So it's- Absolutely. It's something so cool for me. That's one of the yeah. reasons why I love working on this product so much. Yeah, absolutely. I my oldest daughter has done a lot with memories, and I've I've thought, oh, that's really great, but I didn't really know much about how to do it. And I'm super excited about recording some stuff about my mom who's passed on and being able to carry that through for my grandchildren that are now coming and would have never met her. And to just be able to to preserve that is going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's that's what we want, and we want you to to upload the things that are the most meaningful to you, the things that you think your kids and grandkids are going to appreciate the most. Um, you don't need to upload every single picture of your grandpa, or every. You don't have to uh, upload every single picture of yourself. You can upload things about yourself, but the things that are the most meaningful, the things that are most important, so that those pearls uh, can be preserved through through time and and that's 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 one thing that i really really love about this yeah that's amazing now we talked about stories right this is a picture and we just told the story about this picture in this way but there is another way that you can write actually a story um about um about your ancestor so i'm gonna teach you now about that okay um, and I'm going to be focusing on another one of my relatives, um, my other grandpa. Um, and so when you click on add a memory, you can click on create a story. And now it's going to take you to a page where you can actually write a story about the person that you want. In the same way that you did before. Uh, the difference is that um, in this way, you can create a longer story. You can add more than one image to it. And so- oh, wow. Let's say that I have pictures of my, my grandpa and I want to tell a story about my grandpa and my grandma. And I have a cool story about my grandma and grandpa that, that is really close to me. And I really, really want for people in the future to read about. 
And so I can select from gallery and pick the pictures of my grandpa and a picture of my grandma and my grandpa and my dad when he was a kid. Aww. And I said, okay, I want to attach those two pictures to my story because those the story I'm going to be writing is about those three people. Okay. And I'm going to attach it. And then I can decide um, which picture is the first picture that, I, that other people are going to be seeing. And so this is the picture I want. And then this is another picture of him. But I can decide that this is the picture I want as the, uh, the first picture. Okay. I can add a title and say the time when my dad made <clears throat> my grandma laugh. Oh, here I can tell a story about how uh, my dad was such a he's, he's such a funny kid and and he made my my grandma laugh so hard and it's a cute moment that I want to tell about my grandma and my grandpa being together as a family and be able to 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 recount that story and so I can tell when my dad was ten. And I can write my whole story and I can write paragraphs and paragraphs of, of this story in there and, and really express my feelings about uh, my grandma, my grandpa, and what I remember from the story that my dad told me um, about this event. There was a special event in my, my, uh, my father's life. Um, and then I can save it. And once I save it, that's my story that I just created. And as you can tell, the first picture that I did was this one. And so now I have my two pictures and I can have up to 10. Wow, and then I, I really like that. Say again? I said, I really like that. That's, I again, another feature I didn't know about. Um, super excited to be able to use that and, and to, to be able to capture some, some things, especially about my grandparents, my mother, people who passed on that I personally knew that my kids or my grandkids don't, that it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, and, and, and that's a, a cool thing to do, right? It's, it's it, it being able to, to make these people live throughout time. And so now your kids and your grandkids are gonna be able to, to, to to know their parents and grandparents and great grandparents to the story they're gonna be writing the story they're gonna be telling. Yeah. And so if we go back in the gallery now, I recreated, I created that story and it gets added to my gallery. So now I have the pictures that, that I can tell stories about in here and I can write, uh, I can look at the, the story that I created. And so in my gallery, I have everything and I can still attach this story to my grandpa. And so Hi. I can search who is in this memory. I can search for my grandpa again, Francesco Modugno, and I can click on him and gets added and attached automatically to, um, to my grandpa. And the reason why it, this was simpler than the other one is because I already had my grandpa in the tree while my other grandpa didn't have in the trees. Uh, and so I had to go and find him. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a little bit different. Yeah, and so these are some of the ways that we have to enrich these, these memories that we have. We have stories and audios and, and, and documents, but we can tell more stories about it. And it's so, so important to do that so that these people, they are so close to us and that we love so much, can live through time and they can be known by the people that we love in the future. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that today. And um, I'm sure this is, more than just for me is going to be so valuable to anybody who watches this and delves into it. The process is simple. The, the experience is enriching for not only yourself, but the people that come after you to view those people in the tree. And that's just amazing. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thanks for having me. And thank you all of you for coming here and to be with us. And um, we hope you enjoyed this session. And if you have uh, any questions, please go to our website and send us feedback and ask questions. And uh, please watch the other sessions. The other yeah. sessions will be very, very interesting and super helpful for you to discover your family and to learn more uh, about your past. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. See ya. You too.